here. All we're talking about this week, Titans turmoil, Gold Coast crisis, call it what you like. Why is it so hard? Why has why there been no success, do you think, NRL level on the Gold Coast? There's something about the place. I mean, everybody wants to go there. Unfortunately, uh, that doesn't add up, though, with success on the sporting field. Gold Coast have got to figure out what sort of club they are. And instead of being the nice guys who always run 14th and 15th to make everybody else feel better, get out there, get a hard edge to your club and start winning some games. 2019 was a big year for the Gold Coast Titans, but in a bad way. They got rid of their coach, they finished with the wooden spoon. Where to from now for the Titans? I think the next decision is a big one, you know, they've got to get the coach right. I think there's so much more than the Gold Coast Titan needs than, than just a head coach. They need a playing roster that has an identity, that actually stands for something. How does the club earn back credibility at the moment the club is a I've worked. It's an easy place to fall in love with, but for many Australian sports, the Gold Coast has been Heartbreak City. One game keeps coming back, this time apparently by invitation. We've raised our standards this year. This pre-season has been really solid, really strong. Let's not just leave it yesterday. Let's go today and give our best here, OK? Oh, give our best. Yes. Yes. We might not get a PB, but I just want to see your best effort. Have the time of your life. We're all going. Push each other. Going three. Go. Here we go. Let's not warm into this. Let's get really uncomfortable here. It is a test. We should be down to two laps to go, so we're all picking the tempo up, picking the tempo up. Eight, nine, four minutes on the clock, boys. Keep working straight. Four, thirty, one, two, three, four, five, four. Don't feel like you've got to polish it up too much. Like Peter Bedell, chief league writer of the Courier Mail. I look at the recent history of the Titans and I just see it as shamefully shambolic. I mean, one finals appearance in 10 years, two wooden spoons, not only on the field problems, lowest membership in the NRL, poor crowds, but look at the off-field stuff. A drug scandal in 2015. They were training at Southport School at the time, the administration base. They get kicked out of the school because of the drug scandal. They have their homeless, they've got nowhere to go. So they were Australian sports train wreck. The big change here is that the NRL has stepped in and taken control. Surely must say it's a disappointing day. Look, uh... The Titans have gone bankrupt twice, technically. I mean, in 2012, they had debts of $30 million. And then going into 2015, there was a takeover of the club from the NRL. So it could have easily been on death's door a number of times. And I think you'll find the Gold Coast Suns and the AFL have had similar problems at nearby Carrara. So whether anyone can make a professional sporting team on the Gold a success, I'm not completely certain. I mean, if you were a patient, they were dead set going into intensive care with the defibrillators out. To leave the Gold Coast without a licence would be doing the game of rugby league a grave injustice. All right, ready to go? 
Good morning, everybody, uh, and thank you very much for making the effort to be here this morning at short notice. It is with great pleasure that I confirm the local consortium, led by Rebecca and Brett Fazell and Daryl and Joanne Kelly, will now take ownership of the Titans. The short answer is that the game doesn't have the funds to bail out clubs in the future. So clubs need to stand on their own two feet. They're very lucky to still be here, and it's only probably the generosity of people like Daryl Kelly and Beck Frizzell that have kept this club afloat. It is Monday Night Football. It's the Titans up against the Sharks. The Gold Coast is alive with Rugby League back on the... We pretty well live and breathe Titans. If we didn't have it, I always say to my husband, we'd probably be divorced because we have nothing else in common. So, <laughs> so that's our, our thing that brings our family together. Where I work, recycling place, we do skip bins and find a lot of Titans stuff, which my cousin, who's a Bronco supporter, likes to tease me about because they'd never throw out their Bronco stuff, you know? So, so but look, um, if they want to throw it away, I'll take it. You know, we keep it here. We live on the street going to the training field, so when all the boys are going to training, they see our flag flying. It's become a bit of an icon to the suburb because everyone knows our flag. And we love it because we love to, you know, shout out to the community, we love Titans. It's a hard place on the Gold Coast there's, it's a bit of a transient sort of place. So a lot of people that come here have already got a team. Yeah, and there a lot of Sydney people live here, a lot of Victorians. So it's sort of hard to bring them across. Just want to say to all the kids out there, mate, if you live on the Gold Coast, this is your club, you know? Well, look, they were going great, weren't they? You know, like they made their prelim. Underway at Skill Park for Adina. It's a little bit of Preston magic. And Scotty Prince was there in support. Crossfield board here, full of freaky, and that will be enough. And it could be some sort of celebration here in the Gold Coast tonight. Mates of mine were saying, you know, where the hell did these guys come from? And then it just... <sighs> thought there was a period of time under the coaching of Neil Henry that they started to find this ability to scrap and fight and, and compete on everything and that deteriorated. That deteriorated pretty quickly. People were taking all their jerseys and memorabilia out on the street and lighting them on fire and then getting in the cars and reversing and driving over it. There was just a stink. We'd be at the stadium and people would walk out. No doubt, we, we've been really disappointed with some of the things that have gone on. But like having kids, you kind of teach them to stick to it, you know? This is your club, you're not, you're not gonna give up, no matter what. And then you have your little highlights where you win games, you know? And I'll tell you what, when you're losing all the time and you win them games, you know? Even there was a game there a couple of years ago where it went to um, Golden Point against Penrith. And we lost by one point, but it didn't matter, it was still the best game. Like when you're a Titan supporter, when we've been through all that stuff, to come close is, is great. It doesn't matter if we win or not, you know? It hurt me as a rugby league person to see the struggles of the Titans and the previous Gold Coast franchises over the years. First priority was ensuring that we had quality leadership. It's only two weeks ago that we're here announcing Mel Meninga and today I want to introduce you to our new Chief Executive Officer. Yes, Steve Mitchell, CEO of the Gold Coast Titans.
All the external pieces for the club were here. The Gold Coast is over 600,000 people now. There's 13,500 participants, both genders, junior and senior, between Logan and Lismore. It's a traditional rugby league heartland. They have lost their last six, so very much playing for pride. That concerned me, that young people would miss their opportunities to represent their community through the Titans, through their states, through their country, um, if, if the national franchise wasn't successful. To end, from a team perspective, a most disappointing season. It was really fundamentally important and ultimately is a critical piece, is getting our football program right and getting some results. We, we can't shirk that. that. It is important for us to perform. The reality is that the Titans are a great community champion and the, you know it is a club with a big heart. But the reality is all that great work is amplified and magnified when you're winning on the field. At the end of the day, it's about getting you know, quality, quality people on board. And you know that that necessarily requires a, a degree of selflessness and sacrifice, you know, if we're going to achieve what we aim to achieve. The owners and, and, uh, and Dennis have pushed it through a fair transition period from NRL back to where we are now. So now it's about stability, consolidation, get some energy and let's get excited and let's rip into 2019. It all went pear-shaped. They lost 11 in a row. You don't know what, what the Titans are, you don't know what they stand for. I think the next decision for the Gold Coast Titans is a big one, you know, they've got to get the coach right. The only thing the Gold Coast right now has got going for it is it's got an NRL job for one of those coaches. We're in no doubt that this is this is it, you know, this is this is this is the last stand. You know, we have to, we have to get it right. You know, there are plenty of other people, you know, banging on the door who would um, you know, probably like to launch teams elsewhere. Yeah, brave statement by Dennis and an admirable one. And I, and I say this because having covered the Titans since day one, one thing I've been sick and tired of is people internally who lived in fairyland. They had, they had warped opinions of how good they were. They were comfortable with mediocrity. I remember saying, why, why are you happy being 12? Why don't you want to win comps? Like if I was at the club, I'd want mongrel, I'd want winners, I'd get rid of people who just want to have an NRL contract. That's not acceptable for me. You either be in with a crack and you want to win the comp, or you tolerate mediocrity. And the Titans were tolerating mediocrity. And for too long, that's been the problem with the club. So for Dennis to come forward, I think that was a seminal statement to say, we no longer just want to be mediocre, we want to be dominant. And I think that's a, a key distinction. It was a rallying cry. It wasn't. I wasn't being a prophet of doom, but it was a rallying cry for, for support, both both internally and externally. You know, we did have to get that decision right. What's the latest you're hearing? I still get the feeling, Ben, that Kevin Walters is firming by the day as the man most likely to take over and lead the Gold Coast Titans into a new era. And I actually think it, it might well come to fruition by the end of this week, early next week. That Kevin Walters gets appointed. Yes. Everyone saw Kevy just seem to tick the boxes, you know, Queenslander, origin coach, big name, big personality. He just seemed to fit the Titans. Oh, I knew, I knew Lachlan well from uh, when I was in the Cowboys. He a really good guy and I knew I could get an honest uh, rap if I gave him a call. So I asked him, how are you, mate? And he said, I'm good, but I'm filthy you're ringing me because I know all you are and I don't want to lose him. He said he's been the best coach he'd ever worked for. Um, he said, you know, what, I'm, what I do well, he builds, and what I'm not doing well, we work on. He said, other coaches usually built me on what I'm not doing well. And uh, he said, I'm playing out of my skin. He said, he's been phenomenal for me. So yeah, I said, thanks, Lockie, I'll talk to you later. <laughs> but I remember getting a phone call from a contact and they said, Kevin Walters won't get this job, it's going to Justin Holbrook. This is a massive ask for a rookie coach who's never coached in the NRL to go to the Gold Coast where nothing works. And I, and I was surprised, I thought okay, I didn't know much about him as a coach, I started doing some research. The future survival of the club 
to put on a bloke who hasn't coached NRL. And he'd had some good results in England, 80% success record with St Helens, won a grand final in his last game before coming to the Titans. So I was a little bit surprised, but the more I inquired, the more calls I made, the more people I spoke to, it started to make sense that this was a young coach on the rise at the right time of his career to be at the vanguard of the new NRL head coach. Small is back. Welcome back. Can I talk, but he's back. Yeah, Justin Holbrook, head coach of the Gold Coast Titans. Back in St Helens, where I absolutely loved it over there. I love coaching there. I love the the people involved. Um, staff and players at the club and, and obviously had some good success there. So I was re really happy there, but, you know, wanted to coach in the NRL. And I guess the phone call from Mal was the, the real sort of turning point. He just had a chat to me about my coaching and then I asked him a lot of questions about the club. Everything that Mal said, um, you know, excited me uh, about the Gold Coast in terms of, you know, starting with the owners, you know, Rebecca and Brett Frizzell and, and Daryl and Joe Kelly, how committed they were. Because previously to me going to St Helens, I'd obviously been assistant coach of the Sydney Roosters and watched the Gold Coast and they obviously weren't doing too well. And when I was in England, they weren't doing too well. So um, for me, I had to make sure that, that everything was going to be in place to, to give them a best chance of, of, you know, making it a success. Point lead here on the Gold Coast. So much to like about the Cowboys tonight, and they finish in style. We can't. No. Just comes back to hard work. We've got to work harder during the 80 minutes. I have dreamy angle goes Kelly. Kick in behind. Chases there. Sammy! Play it again, Sammy! Almost a year to the day. And that's how long it's been since the Gold Coast Titans have won a game of footy. But they can celebrate now. Ash Taylor is pumped up. What a night for Holbrook. And they are off the bottom of the ladder. Smiles all round on the Gold Coast. New fires it to Anthony Don. What a remarkable turn of events as the siren was about to sound. You know, I was confident with help of others that, that I could be a, you know, a big part of it and, and that excited me. The Gold Coast Titans are successful at home. What I'm excited about watching what Justin was trying to instill on that side starting to actually come alive. Wow! What an end of the half! I think we're learning how to play and how to give ourselves a chance to win. I thought we did that today. They rushed in, chance, try! to be better next week. That's a heartbreaker for Kevin Proctor and the Titans. They've taken two serious teams the distance over the last fortnight, but nothing to show for it. Full time at the end. You know, there was one incident I saw, and it summed up the change of the Titans under Justin Holbrook for me. Round 13 against the North Queensland Cowboys. The Titans are leading 20 nil, so they've got the game in the bag pretty much. Three minutes into the second half, at a time when most teams switch off when they're leading by 20. Fogarty. Jamal Fogarty puts a kick in across. The ball's about to go dead in goal, and Kevin Proctor runs through and he leaps full length and bats it back in field, and Brian Kelly scores. That, to me, summed up the new Titans. Fogarty! Jamal Fogarty slams it down! Last kick goes to Thompson. Ton of a pier. He's going to score a wonderful team try. They beat the Broncos in back-to-back -back attempts for the first time in club history. Oh, AJ Brimson down the middle. Good boy. Taylor the kick. Spry coming through. Jermaine Spry. The Titans four wins in a row. They are a team on the rise. So much to celebrate for the Titans. 2021 can't come soon enough. Congratulations.
and welcome to our special season review of the Gold Coast Titans here on Wild World of Sport. And who would have thought, guys, that the Titans would be Queensland's best team, easily their best team in 2020? One word to describe their season. I'll start with you, Walt. Impressive. Lockie? Impressive. Yeah. <laughs> we should, we should have coordinated that a bit, but why impressive, Lockie? Oh, look, I think most people had... Um, you know, predictions of the Titans finishing right down near the bottom. Uh, and in fact, where they are today, currently ninth on the ladder. Um, We've come back to training, not, you know, back at square one again. We've made inroads. All of a sudden, I think we've got a bit of credibility from the rest of the league, and um, and that and that's important to me. You know, I don't want to be the oh, you know, they're in the competition. I make up the numbers. Nobody wants that. And, you know, a lot of people have said to me, oh, now there's expectation on you. How how do you find that? And it's good. You know, we're in sport, which you know everyone wants winners and losers. <laughs> about 2021 guys what's the realistic expectation if you're a Titans fan is a premiership within reach or do you just settle for the top eight or do you yeah, it's always tough in sport because, you know, we've got 16 teams in the NRL and everyone's got the same goal, you know, to win the comp. And more realistic for a lot of teams is the top eight. And, and the reason it's such a great competition is because the salary cap does that. It, it makes all 16 teams think that they're going to fit into the top eight. And uh, anyone that doesn't make the eight, you know, us included, we, we want to make sure we're better to make the eight. So it is so difficult to, to give an, an outcome. Uh, one thing I do know, we're obviously stronger than what we were, you know, this year, you know, um, I'm excited about um, what's possible. As for what is, I'm not sure, but um, you know, I'm looking forward to it.